um, on page 91. Last day of July. My, my niece and nephew just had a kid this morning. Really? Yeah, so that was a cool, nice little wake up to that morning. <laughs> anyway, all right, so we're on page 91, so we're just finishing up that last sample C for that section. So we've covered um, angle between two lines last week, so let's do a quick recap before we do that. So the angle between two lines is going to be the absolute value of the difference, the difference sorry, between the gradient over the sum of one and the product of those two gradients. Okay, what was the condition for this? This will give you the what angle? Start with A. Acute angle. Okay, because remember in the first quadrant, all angles are positive, but in the second quadrant, tan is negative. Okay, so if you need the obtuse angle, what do you need to do? Mm -hmm. but, but don't round until your final answer. Alright? If you round one early, like at that step, you have the potential to lose marks there for your rounding error. Okay? Um, and then we looked at ratios. So, mx2 plus nx1 over the sum of the ratio. And the y value is going to be y, that's right, m y2 plus n y1 over m plus n. So we've got addition on both top and bottom. And we set up the question correctly with the coordinate and the ratio underneath and then put the arrows like we're cross multiplying. Right. Yep, okay, this will help us to remember the process and the formula itself. Okay, now this gives you the what? The ratio, well, what can you tell me about this formula? Um, can you read the ratio of x and y? Yep. Anything else you remember from right there? This will give you the internal ratio. Okay, so the point that lies internally between the two points. Yep, yep. okay. So the, the other condition where we have the external. Yep, and what, the, what do we need to do to change that? Um, one what negative. One negative. Not X or Y, no. Okay, the ratio itself, so when you're told the ratio, so it might be ratio 5 to 3, for example. If you're told, if you're not told externally or you are told internally, okay, you use that as normal. Okay, so the question doesn't specify internally or externally, you use your internal one, the straight application formula. When it's external, you just change one of your uh, values of the ratio to a negative, okay? Doesn't matter which one, unless there's something in the question that's going to suggest you need to do a specific end. Alright, so I'll let you go through your exercises and you'll see, hopefully, see an example where that comes up and then you can um, have a go at working it out. Right, any questions on that? Alright, so let's finish up example C. Alright, so PQ. Meet the line 2x plus 3y equals 4. At a point C. And we are told P equals 2 comma 2. And Q. Minus 1 minus 2. We need to find the ratio PC to CQ. Okay, the PQ meets the line 2x plus 3y equals 4 at C, where P is 2 comma 2 and Q is minus 1 comma minus 2. We need to find the ratio of PC to CQ. Any ideas on what I'm going to do first? What C is? Okay. Find the 
option C? Yes, but before we do that, let's do something else first. Draw A. Diagram. Alright, whenever you're given words, alright, and you can apply it to a diagram, that's the first thing you're doing, okay? So, P is 2, comma 2. So there, Q is minus 1, minus 2. So it's rough, it doesn't have to be accurate, but it's got to be reasonably accurate, okay, in terms of getting everything in the right spot, okay, but I'm not going to measure out two centimetres and up to, you know, I'm not going to go that pedantic in what I'm doing. Just a general sketch, gives you an idea, and if you just do a sketch, and that might be enough to get your part mark, okay, you're showing some understanding for the question itself. Right, so, PQ, make the line 2x plus 3y equals 4, so PQ, so we've got the interval there, so let's join it up. Alright, so now we need to do a rough sketch of that line. Alright, so what do we need to do first with the equation here? Make it general. Make what? And make it a general equation. Um, yeah, and how are you going to do that? Put the four on the other side. So you're making general, but what did I show you on Wednesday to make it easier? Make oh. it Y. Y equals form, and we get the gradient and the Y intercept, and then from those two things we can plot the line. Y yeah. Okay, where B is the Y intercept, so I'll start with where across is the Y axis, and then from that I'll include the gradient to plot the general path of the line. Alright, so 3Y is negative 2X plus 4, and Y is negative two-thirds of x plus four over three. Okay, doesn't always work nicely, those numbers in the fraction. However, we can still do, put, um, do the application. Alright, so at four comma three, it's so just over one, so approximately here. One and a third. Okay, now the gradient, M, is that, which is rise over run. So we've got a rise of negative 2 and a run of 3. So from this, we're going to go down 2, so just below the um, origin, and then a run of 3. Okay, down 2, and then a run of 3. Okay, so this equation line. The PQ meet the line at C. Okay, so that's the intersection there. So find the ratio PC. So essentially we are finding M and N there. Okay, so never leave a question that a diagram could be drawn without a diagram, okay? So the worst, you can do a diagram, we can't move on from that, then move on to the next question, all right? Right, so now that we're doing diagram, what's next? Um, yep, that'll be good, all right? Because typically that'll be your P, like your, um, that'll be the X and Y, the subject of the formula. Yep, okay, so we find that, we've got X's and Y's, we've already got X2 and X1, and Y2, Y1, Y1. Uh, Yep, we got that. Okay. Uh, and then from that, we can substitute in the formula, and it looks like we're going to have a bit of work to do to get the values of M and N. Okay. Right, so, we should find the intersection. What do we do? Well, I've got the equation in this line. Substitute the equations into each other that actually more. So? Yeah, but we don't have equations for this one, don't we? No, no. Yeah. Um, AX plus BY plus C plus K, AX BY plus C. Uh, but we don't want the yeah. equation of that third line. So yes, I can see what you're thinking, but that gives you a third line that has an external point and the intersection to other points. Okay, so we don't need that third line. Okay, so basically, yes, we need to solve 
two equations simultaneously to get the, simul the intersection point there. All right, but before we can do that, we need to actually come up with oh, the equation of y PQ y for the gradient, and then we need to find the equation. So x1, y1, and x2, y2. Perhaps to the gradient. Guys, everyone. So we've got minus 2, minus 2, over minus 1, minus 2. Minus 4 over minus 3, so we've got 4 over 3. So to find the equation of the line, I have the gradient. What else do I need to be able to get the equation of the line? One of the points. One of the points, yeah. Okay, so essentially you need two points. You use the two points to get the gradient, okay, and then you use one of them for your equation. Remember the extra equation. Good. Um, which point are you going to use and why? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One, same number. Two, yeah. they're both positive. Okay. Just one left thing I'll have to. Consider not that you would get it wrong if you would use the other point. Pretty good to me. All right, and we are expecting four thirds here, aren't we? Because we've got Kekko there. You know, if you don't get that same answer when you're putting Y equals M F plus B forms, something's wrong. Okay, so now we have two equations. So I'll make this equation one. Right, we already arranged it to Y equal, and that's why I put this one as Y equal. So I can just do the substitution method. Yep. Right, so put that into equation one. Both are y equals. That's why I've written it in y equals form. Okay, so I can just put a straight substitution. <clears throat> Alright, so negative two thirds of x plus four thirds is equal to four thirds of x. Take away two thirds. Okay, a bit messy with all the fractions involved. Alright, but we can do something first before we have to worry about fraction. Everything by three, but the denominators are all the same. Okay, so this makes it nice to be able to just cancel everything. Um, so negative. 6x is going to be negative 6, but x is going to be 1. Now, looking at those x and y values, is that a sensible answer in terms of my diagram? What am I looking for? What am I doing? <laughs> okay, so we just solved simultaneously for the point C. Yeah. Is that more x is 1, y is 2 third, is that a reasonable answer for the diagram? Okay, why? Because they're both Yep. And it's not right out. 
Yeah, okay. So the point P is X, uh, X A P is 2. They'll get something beyond 2, there's something wrong. And the uh, X value of Q is negative 1, so I'm between those two. And you're also going to consider Y value of 2 is negative 2, okay? And it's between those as well. All right, so these are quick sort of things you can do to check your answers as you're working, okay? Or if, you're, um, if you happen to finish your extension 1 exam on time, and you have some time at the end, that sort of thing you can do at the end of check. Okay? Not that you'll have a lot of time at the end for your extension. Extension exam, but if you happen to, that's what you've got. Right, so, um, so therefore C is 1, 2 thirds, and in that formula, that's going to be your X and Y, because that is the point that divides the ratio of that line. Okay, so X and Y. So this is probably a looking like a three mark question. Okay, so your first mark to recognise probably um, probably get the equation so you can solve simultaneously. Second mark would be identifying that point C, and your third mark is getting the values of the um, the values for the ratio. Any questions so far? Right, so start with X. X, well, we can use either, really. Actually, we will need two because we've got two different variables we need to work on. Right, so X is um, M X2 plus N X1 over M plus N. Alright, so I've got X is X X1 and X2. So, 1 is going to be M X2, which is negative 1. So M times negative 1, just put the brackets are there. Plus N, lots of X1, which is 2. Over M plus M. So M plus N is going to equal negative M plus 2N. I'm going to move everything onto the one side just to keep one variable. So I'm going to have 2M take away N is 0. Yep. Alright. Why? So y is um, m y2 plus m y1 over m plus n. So that's why we need the second equation, because we should have two variables we need to solve. Okay, and also remember the order. The question said the ratio of PC to CQ, so that's why I made that m. Okay, so don't make this m, because then you'll be going the ratio QC to CP. Yep, okay, because we've got the ratio in the specific order, okay, so that's what you need to be mindful of. Alright, so y is two thirds, it's going to be m lots of y2 plus n lots of y1. Okay, so cross multiply, so two lots of m plus n is going to be negative 6m plus 6n. Yep, now at this point I've got N by itself, so I'll probably rearrange this one to get N, 
the subject, which were equal to 2m, and then substitute into this equation. Right, so n is equal to 2m, equation 3. Then equation 4, what we just got there. So we need to put equation 3 into equation 4. So 8m take away 4 lots of 2m is equal to 0. We do have a problem. We have a very big problem, don't we? What do you know? It's going to give you this new zero, zero, isn't it? What have we done? Usually I practice these questions um, in the morning, but I forgot to take one that time. Because we can see that's going to give us just redundant values for M and N. Go back to here. Shouldn't have developed my diagram yet. So, going back to this point here, that point, mm -hmm. alright, what are we effectively finding? So I've labelled this here M, and I've labelled this here N. Okay, so what are we effectively finding? How many M's fit into N? Uh, not quite, different line of thinking. What was the question again? Read the last line of the question. Of what? So what's PC? Which is A? Interval, isn't it? So we find the distance of the interval. And that will give us the value for M. Yeah, and then we find the interval, the distance of the interval CQ. And that will give us the value for Q. Uh, for N, sorry. So we have to use the distance formula twice. Alright. Do you remember the formula? So distance notation wise, so P C. going to make C the, um, the first integer of x2, y2, and then x1, y1 will be the p and q when I work with those. Not really. I'm just saying this for how I'm doing it. Alright, so we got 1, take away 2, or squared, plus 2 thirds.
Father and Father the Third? Father the Third? Yep. <coughs> now we did that with our calculator. The distance, so uh, CQ. To be fair, it was square numbers. <laughs> hey? It was square numbers. I would hope so, because the question I'm going to ask you is you're going to get to the very end, and they're not going to give you these sort of numbers yeah. at the end. That's just really a suck of a question, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so see here. So 1 plus 1, all squared, plus 2 thirds plus 2, all squared. So the square root of 4. 2 thirds plus 2 is 2 thirds plus 6 thirds is 4 plus 8 over 3. 12 and then plot this one. No. 54 over 9. 9 fours are 36. 36, 64, 100 over 9. Square root. It's equal to 10 over 3. Yep. So, this equals m, and this equals n. Um, I'm thinking at this point we need whole numbers. Absolutely correct. Good. So if it wasn't quite so straightforward, you'd be cross multiplying and getting that. Right. Now I am pretty sure they would expect that as integers, positive integers for this case. Okay. So therefore, um, what was it? PC to CQ is one to two. The order is important there. Okay, so if you get through all that work, all that working, I mean, it's probably very tough to take the way marks after you've shown it. Okay, but please don't put yourself in that position. All right, that was a bit of a question, wasn't it? Yeah. All right, but really, if you break it down right up to the, it wasn't difficult at all. All right, it's just a few concepts you had to do. Um, you had to find the equation of this line, then you had to find the intersection point. And then you have to use this and find it twice. All right. So really, um, grand scheme thing is not that hard a question. It just took some time. Okay. Well, that'll be worth probably a good three marks in your assessments. Okay. Any questions on that? All right. So that now covers exercise seven point. Right, let's make a little start on parametrics. Get you thinking about things ready for next week. And get Robin, if he's able to watch the videos. Um, and get him ready for next week as well, if he's coming back then. So, page 108 now. Okay, so essentially this is just a lot of algebra. Um, it's an extension locus, okay, and also combines um, calculus in this as well. Okay, so um, we're going to learn uh, the calculus on today's and Monday's lesson to get through the rest of the parametric, okay, but we can make a start on this before we need to go into the calculus. All right, so 11.9 parametric equation, there it is. Right, so typically we have been using equations involving the terms x and y, as these equations can be graphed on the Cartesian plane. Okay, the number plane is also called the Cartesian plane. Um, these equations are called Cartesian equations. OK, 
Okay, so when you can graph them on their Cartesian plane. There. There's another way to represent an equation using x and y, the variable, but also introducing a third variable, which is called a parameter, where parametric come from. Okay? Such equations are called parametric equations. So, any Cartesian equation can be represented as a parametric equation, okay? and just about every single one vice versa. Okay? So you'll be able to represent every single Cartesian into a parametric form, but every single parametric form, just about, not all of them, can be represented back into the Cartesian form. Alright, A. Right, y equals 2x plus 3 into parametric form. Okay, so you typically introduce a third parameter. Okay, so if we let y equal the third parameter t, you're going to see lots of p's, q's and t's in this topic. Okay, then um, we need to then come up with the value for x. Okay, using that parameter. So how am I going to do that? So t is equal to 2x plus 3. So t take away 3 is 2x. And x is going to be t take away 3 on 2. Okay. Now, while we're on the topic, okay, so sense what this does. Um, so we have x and t. There, we also have y and t. So instead of using one plane, we're using now two separate planes. Okay, so we can graph each of these. So y equals t, which is that straight line there. All right, and the second one, x is t, take away three on two. So the gradient is going to be t over two, and the y-intercept is going to be negative three over two. Okay, so negative 3 on 2 and a gradient of a half. So we have something like this. That straight line there. Okay. So that is the graphical form of what we're doing. Okay. Alright. B. Find the Cartesian equation. Okay, so now I'm going back the other way. So we have x is 2t and y is t plus 2. So we have two parametric equations, okay, because we have the third parameter involved. We've got x, y, and t. Right. To get it back to Cartesian form, we need to eliminate the variable t. Okay, any idea how I'm going to do that? Uh, yeah, and then what are you going to do with that? Oh, too far. Alright, so, number one, number two, form equation one. Actually, from equation 2, um, t is going to be y take away 2. Now put that in equation 1. So x is going to be 2 lots of y take away 2. So you've eliminated the parameter. Now let's get it back into the format it should be in. Um, so 2y is x plus 4. y is x on 2 plus 4. 2 x over 2 plus 2. 
put him back into the Y with MX plus B form. But the way he said it, you, I think you were suggesting, um, was that what you were suggesting, sorry? Because um, it seemed like you were suggesting something else. Yeah, but we don't need to do that sort of thing, but we need to put it in that form. Yeah. Okay, just put it back in the form that we're typically used to in Cartesian. All right, let's see. Cartesian equation of x is t plus 2, and y is t squared, take away 1. Okay, so we've had two linear ones there. So now we have a non-linear as well. So we can have that as a part of our power metrics. Perhaps so it depends on the complexity of it. Sometimes we can't put them in from power metric back to linear, uh, back to Cartesian. All right, so equation one, equation two. All right, so what are you going to do? No, I wouldn't do that one. Well, what do we do here? What do we start? Made both T. I didn't make them both T. I made one T. Yeah, which one are we going to make T? The first one. Why? Because it's not square. Okay, well, I'm not going to make this T, am I? Then I'm going to have the third seal with it. I don't want that, all right? So equation one, um, T is X take away two, and then put that into equation two. Okay, so I think at the point where they're both non-linear, that's where you're going to start having the issues with in terms of trying to get them into the this with um, t squared plus two and t squared. Oh, you could probably do it actually technically because both, but if they're both different powers, probably yeah. is probably where you're going to run into some more problems. All right, so y is x take away two or squared take away one. Remember how to expand that? Yeah. And then take away 1. So y is going to be x squared, take away 4x plus 3. Yep, and that's in the format that we're used to. Right. So that's how we deal with that. Okay. Now, this topic is essentially based on eliminating the parameters. Okay, so you have parametric equation, like we've done here. Right. This is a more straightforward application. Right, but then you can have some more further applications and you'll see as we move into the topic it can get quite tricky okay, in terms of the algebra involved but the sense of what you want to get in your mind today for this topic is the process of eliminating the parameters all right, and that will become more clearer as we move into the topic. So, note that there is an infinite number of ways the Cartesian equation can be written as a parametric equation. Okay, so this depends on what we set as the parameter. Right, so for example, if I do A again, example A, so Y is 2X plus 3. Okay, I can do a different parameter if I wish. Right, so for example, let Y is 2T. Okay, and that will make um, 2T is equal to 2X plus 3. That's another valid solution. Okay, it doesn't matter what we do. If I let um, y equals t plus 4, for example, okay, I can write the value for x using that parameter. All right, so t plus 4 is 2x plus 3. So t plus 1 is 2x, and x is going to be t over 2 plus a half.
Yep. Okay, so another one I could do to let y is t squared. Right, so t squared is equal to 2x plus 3. 2x is t squared plus 3, uh, take away 3. And x is going to be t squared take away 3 all over 2. So you're going to have a quadratic relationship happening there. Okay, so depends on what we pick as the parameter, um, there's an infinite number of ways we can write a Cartesian equation into a parametric equation. Okay, now typically you're just going to do something simple like that. Okay, you don't have to do this, but yet if you were to do this, I'd have to mark, mark it as correct. All right, but typically we'll just keep it nice and simple there. All right. Um, however, going backwards, if we um, had the parametric equation back to a Cartesian, there's only a finite way that can work. Okay, there's not a many many ways that can work out. Okay, each parametric equation has its unique Cartesian equation. Now we've got time. Much. Might stop it there. I think we've got you thinking enough. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully we'll have Robin back with us on Wednesday next week and we can continue specifically relating to the parabolas on that. Right. Um, you'll be able to um, make a start if you... But you won't be able to go through the whole exercise just yet. Right, you've got 7.10, which was the uh, ratio from there. And then if you um, want to make a start, you can. Otherwise, I've got the rest of that lesson to finish up on Wednesday next week.